I'm Tandy, and today we're going to be playing some more Rakdos Vampires in Pioneer. We are testing for the Pioneer RCQ season, which starts in just a few weeks. The standard season is officially over, and we are looking to the future. Uh, with Pioneer season coming, you know, there's going to be a lot of people entering into the format that might not know exactly how the decks work, uh, might need some pointers on some like really specific stuff, so I'm going to do my best as I play the games to call out micro interactions, things that might not come up normally, uh, tips and tricks type of deal. But if you already know it, kudos to you. You are an advanced player. Congratulations. Uh, this is the same deck list I've been using for about a week now. Uh, my last league, I played with it. I, I got a trophy. I'm very happy with where the list is at. There are a couple of matchups in the format that uh, can be quite bad. Um, we can compensate by changing our sideboard to beat them, or we can hope that we don't play against them. And right now I'm kind of hoping that I don't play against them. And one of those decks is Amalia Combo. Um, most of the Amalia Combo decks are now using Ether Flux Reservoir as their kill. And so even if I stop their combo, I'm still dead to the Reservoir next turn, since we don't have ways to make them shuffle their deck or, uh, you know, ways to get above 50 life or give ourselves hex brew. Uh, whenever they combo, it's usually game over, which is pretty good against us, and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. Uh, the big addition to this deck from our previous Rakdos Overlords is the combination of Soren and Pierce Bloodlord and Vein Ripper. Soren lets you minus three and put in a large vampire. Vein Ripper is a large vampire, has an insane amount of abilities. The Ward Sacrifice a creature is like secretly hexproof. Um, and the whenever a creature dies, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life triggers even when they kill Vein Ripper and even when they sacrifice a creature to ward. So it really takes four life to kill this in addition to the sacrifice a creature. It's just a really, really powerful combination because Vein Ripper uh, is so strong off the Soren Minus. But the trick to playing these in a Rakdos midrange deck is making sure both of them are useful on their own. And when we get to use Soren in a couple of different ways, uh, the first of which is put a counter on something, it gets lifelink and death touch. We can put counters on Harvester to make it hit a little harder and gain some life so it's easier to win races. We can make Preacher of the Schism a five toughness thing, makes it a little harder to block, makes it a little harder to trade. We can make Dust Legion Zealot have death touch and lifelink so it can chip in there. And then we can also have the big swingy chunks of life gain with Vein Ripper. The other ability on Sorn is the plus one to sack a vampire and deal three in game three. This hits players, so you're going to see a lot of games end with Sorn's plus sacrificing a vampire with a Vein Ripper in play, sometimes even the Vein Ripper itself, to deal the last three to five points of damage and finish your opponent off. We use Sorn's pluses like crazy. They're excellent with Mutavault. They're great with any of the uh, fodder vampires that we have, like Legion Zealot and Harvester. The 1-1s one from Preacher are also vampires that we can sacrifice. That comes up a reasonable amount as well. Really, the 3-drop Planeswalker addition to Rakdos midrange has been its saving grace. I felt like Rakdos midrange, midrange was really falling off, not only in popularity, but also in strength and metagame share. And the addition of the vampire package has all but supplanted it from the metagame which is really impressive considering it was a top three deck. Whenever a top three deck has a, a major overhaul like that, <clears throat> you have to understand that the newer iteration is likely the best iteration, at least for the current snapshot of the metagame. And until they make a three-cost thing that's better than Imperius Bloodlord, which seems really difficult to do, uh, you're going to see Soren into Vein Ripper as a primary win condition for Rakdos, specifically because it gives you like an X factor. Now, if Soren and Vein Ripper were each weak on their own and only had a combo kill together, I don't think they would see play in this deck. So I think that those are really the, the real reasons why this deck is as good as it is. It's because Soren is as good as it seems. Uh, even without the Vein Ripper, it's still excellent. There are very few cards my opponent can play on turn three in Pioneer that make me as fearful as a Soren and Pierce Bloodlord. Even if they don't minus, when they cast it, it's just pure dread. 
because I know that if I don't kill it immediately, I'm probably in a lot of trouble. And if they have the Vein Ripper, the game's probably over. And so that's one of the reasons why I've adopted the strategy myself. I think it's it's a, just a really, really strong deck. The newer addition to the strategy is going to be Archfiend of the Dross. Uh, Archfiend of the Dross is a 4-cost 6-6 six, six flyer. It has Trample. It enters with four oil counters, and at the beginning of each turn, you remove an oil counter. And then if you have no oil counters on it, you lose the game. I'll say this. I have never seen anyone. I have never lost to the oil counters. The only times the oil counters ever killed anyone that I've seen is Heartless Act removing the counters, but Heartless Act sees very little play at the moment. Perhaps if our Tune of the Dross maintains its popularity in the strategy, Heartless Act replaces Bitter Triumph, and then Archfiend of the Dross must be removed in favor of something like Shieldred and Smuggler's Copter, a la the original build of the deck from the Pro Tour. Uh, speaking of the original build from the Pro Tour, we have uh, cut down to two Caverns instead of three, cut down to three Mutabalt instead of four. This is to alleviate some of the color issues that I've been having. We have added a Blight Seth Pathway, and I, I don't know what the other land was, but it's just a... Uh, Colored Mana Source over the Mutavault and uh, a Black Red Duel over the Cavern of Souls. Uh, sideboard for Leyline of the Void for uh, Is a Phoenix, but uh, there's a chance that that becomes something else. Leyline has just been quite good, but uh, everyone is really prepared to fight it when they're playing Is a Phoenix, so maybe we should take a different tactic. Cletus Trader of Get, an additional anti graveyard measure. Uh, this could be Shieldred. I don't think it matters too much. It just needs to be some sort of big threat at four. I like Kalidus because of the uh, strength it has against some of the creature-based strategies in the format. You know, you play this, you fatal push something in the same turn or use Blood Tithe Harvester, it really dominates the game. Uh, Kalidus was an important part of Rakdos mid before Shieldred was printed. And uh, I like having one on the board for some of the same types of matchups where Kalidus was great. Uh, three copies of Path of Peril. This is going to be for Malia and Agrodex. Two Liliana of the Veil. The Edict effect is nice against the opposing Vein Rippers. Uh, there are a couple of decks where Liliana will be great. Liliana stocks going up in a lot of formats. In Standard, uh, it's been kind of cool. In Pioneer, you know, Vein Ripper knocks that out of the park. And then it, even in Modern with the Leyline Scion stuff, I know Aspiring Spike's been playing a lot of Mono Black with uh, Liliana of the Veil. It's been good. Uh, two Damping Sphere. This is for the Lotus Field matchup. One Shielder Zedic to go with the Lelianas for the extra ways to kill Vein Ripper without targeting. And then lastly, two more duress to pair with the one in the main. Uh, mana base, fairly straightforward. A lot of Rakdos duels. We have the two Cavern and three Mutawalt, which I've discussed a little bit. Um, four Blood Crypt, four Black Cleave Cliffs. Sometimes the tap Blood Cleave Cliffs on, Cliffs on four makes Archfiend a little awkward, but I think Cliffs is just too important to the early starts. Blight Step. We're only on three because of uh, tension between it and the black and red cards in the deck. I wouldn't mind playing a fourth bl Blight Step pathway over the third Sulfurous Springs. Maybe that's something we can work on and see if that's any good. But with three copies of Swamp already, it's hard to put a Blight Step pathway on black, and it's really good to have more dual lands and some spots. This is Rakdos Vampires. Let's play League. And if we draw Sorn, we have the other half of our combo. I'm going to keep, but it's a very weak keep. If we get hit with a Thoughtseize and they take our Harvester, there's a good chance we lose. But if they Thoughtseize us, that means the game's going to slow down, so it's okay that we kept a, a slow hand with a lot of land drops. What's up, Joey? How are you today? All right, Zori's Control. So the Blood Tithe Harvester is going to be really useful here. We'll go ahead and get that three power creature down so we can start attacking. We don't mind so much if Dust Legion Zella gets countered. Because it's just a little guy. They also may have to. Go and play the Zealot holding up the blood token. All right, we'll just say go. Probably going to discard the Sulphur Springs. Field of Rune, not such a big deal. We have the Takanuma we can channel this turn. Let's attack, see what they do.
I think there's a good chance we get hit with a verdict next turn, so I kind of want to save the fable. And I kind of also want to save uh, the hive. So we'll say go. They'll go for a field, untap, play verdict, probably. Cycle shark for one. That's fine. I think I'll still probably talk a Numon in step. So it's much less likely they verdict here. Maybe I just save the Takanuma. I think I'm gonna. I don't think I can afford to miss. Let's attack and see if they go for trades. We'll play Fable after they play Wandering Emperor or whatever. Trade here seems fine. All right, we'll go for Fable, see if it gets countered. Maybe I should have played this last turn to force the issue. But now if they verdict, they're going to leave us a window to resolve Vein Ripper next turn. And we don't have Cavern, so... Veto? Okay, we'll play the Hive now that they can't deal to ruin it this turn. They're down to 10. No shock. They did have Wandering Emperor else. I think they would have done it last turn. Let's attack with just the Harvester. Maybe we should play Vein Ripper so they can't make a 2-2 two -two to block. Okay, so they're probably playing Memory Deluge. So let's play Vein Ripper and Punish. That way if they go for a Wrath, we have uh, some extra damage to deal them. And then we can follow up with another Vein Ripper. Really kind of hurt their chances. But basically we just want to force them to not play Deluge. And if they do play Deluge, we want to punish them like crazy. And the Vein Ripper does punish them like crazy here. I'm pretty happy. Not too many people play Absorb anymore. I'm not really afraid of Absorb. No more lies is fine. Because then now they're just spending half their mana. They definitely should have used Filter Rune on the Hive. And then played the No More Lies. Alright, basically same position as last turn. Well now, we're going to play this on Vampire. And we're going to play another one. And this makes it so that they can't play Wandering Emperor and make a 2-2, two -two, or else they just take a lot more damage. They have to minus 2. And if they play Shark Typhoon, it's the same thing. All right, they're up to 9. I guess we're just going to send with the Vein Ripper next turn. I don't know. We do have a really good one to follow up after a verdict. Or if they make a 2 2 or just plus. No, I agree, November. All right, let's go for Thought Seize You. Take your Deluge, probably. They have a couple Deluge. I don't really care about No More Lies anymore. I wish they only had the one, the only, the one Deluge. Might be in some trouble now. We do have the Wandering Emperor checked. We can go Blood Tithe on a 2-2 two -two and then attack the Emperor with the Goblin. That may be what we go for to try to clear up this. All right, we will discard this for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and kill the samurai. All right, we'll attack the Emperor, and this is going to let them play a Deluge. And they may go Deluge into a cheap removal spell. All 
All right, let's hope they don't find it. We got to get this Imper off the table. We're going to play the Preacher because if they Verdict next turn, okay, they're not. They're just going to march. Get lost. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and play at least one map token. We're going to see what the top card is. Top cards are Dust Legion Zealots. I will... I guess I'll just save the other map token as well. Jeffrey? Uh-oh. Probably in some trouble now. We do get to flip this Fable, so hopefully, if they don't have an answer for Flip Fable, we can do some tricks with the Dust Legion. But we'll go Transform. And before I draw, we'll go for Map. All right, and then we'll go Legion Zealots, and then we'll play Preacher and hope they don't have a Sweeper. I'll hold on to Blood Crypt in case we draw another Fable. Or uh, another Harvester. All right, the Teferi Plus, pretty scary. And the Emperor makes a 2-2, which means we're not going to hit with a Wrath, but maybe Preacher or Reflection is dying. Flashback Daylu's main phase. That, in case they draw a removal spell, they're going to kill this on instep. But we have, I mean, this is actually pretty good news for us, all things considered. Now they're going to untap two lands and have open a potential counter removal spell. We know they have no more lies. They don't shock, which means that they only have two mana, not three. Let's see if they have anything to kill. Weird. They stopped on my upkeep. All right, I don't think they have it. I'm going to just target this. We could go for the other one, but... All right, let's go... Teferi with both of these. I don't think I want to throw away the Zealot. So if I just go Teferi with both of these, Teferi's going to die. And then the Emperor's still around. We'll get to draw two cards. Now we do have a good follow-up to a Verdict next turn or some Sweeper. The Fairy's down. The Emperor's still around, though. I'm going to play one land since we have two dead ones hanging. It's a little bit risky, but I think we need to do that to have a shot. Uh, we drew the third Swamp, so Field of Ruin will knock out the Cavern if they want to. We know they have Deluge in the graveyard, they have a No More Lies in hand, and they have four cards we don't know about. Play an Archfiend of the Draw, see what happens. This makes us so if they block with Samurai, they can die. We can also make a copy of it here and attack for more damage. This is technically a lethal attack if they don't have a spot removal spell for the Archfiend. And they're going for a Deluge, so they can miss. Because they if they block with uh, Samurai... One of these gets through. Oh, they found a get lost or something. Bummer. Explore.
Top card Stotsies. We'll keep the keep that on top. All right, so we're attacking the preacher. The preacher draws a card no matter what. When it attacks, yeah. So the preacher will draw a card no matter what. We can send this one at the Wandering Emperor. And if they block, that's fine. Been a heck of a game. I think I'm going to save this for next turn. Maybe we should have sent the Dust Legion as well. I don't want a Thought Seize now. Take away Teferi or something. A bunch of counter spells. Lockdown Emperor. Lockdown doesn't matter that much. I'm going to take the other Emperor. I don't think they had Glacial, so I think they drew that for turn. All right, so they're going to play a Lockdown here and take out Zealot and Treasure. And now we can go Cavern on uh, Phyrexian and then attack with this. And they'll trade with this Hall. All right, let's go for Phyrexian. They're gonna just all counter spells. We'll attack with the preacher. It's pretty good. So they did not trade with the hall. They drew a pathway, so another hand just all counter spells. Okay, but they're dead on board. I don't really know what they're doing. Very curious what's happening. Maybe it was the only way they thought I would block with the Archfiend. Interesting. I mean, I guess that's the out. All right, let's go. I can't believe I won that game, honestly. I mean, it was just all two mana counters at the end, but we played in such a way that made them have a bunch of dead cards, right? And that's why Cavern's in the deck. Uh, I like the Lilies and the Dresses, and I like cutting the Fatal Push. I like leaving Bitter Triumph because it hits Planeswalkers. You can have a few ways to interact with those. Anyway, that's how you play against Blue Eye Control, chat. <laughs> you do exactly what I just did. You squeeze them at every possible moment. You make sure that their best cards can be played at the worst times, and their worst cards have to be played at the best times for you. We kept a weak hand, but it ended up working out, thankfully, because the games just go long. Uh, this is obviously a mulligan. I'm going to grab my blankie. I'm cold. I'm cold lately, chat. I will keep this one. I'm going to put back Bitter. Did you build this or Amalia? If you like it playing Amalia, I would build Amalia. But if you like playing Rakdos mid, I would just build this. I would say streams underrated. Thanks, Derek. I think my big problem is I don't stream enough hours. And, uh... Like, I know that I have game knowledge. A bunch of counter spells, Wandering Emperor. All right, we'll just leave them with a bunch of counter spells. Take their more important things. Let them counter these two doofuses, and then hopefully Soren gets to put in a Vein Ripper in a minute. Think you like a Molly more? That's fine. All right, so this is gonna hit a No More Lies. 
I really appreciate it, Derek. That makes that makes me feel really good, man. I know that I have the game knowledge. I just don't physically play on stream enough. But I have a lot of fingers and a lot of pots, so I try not to give myself too hard of a time. We're gonna be vulnerable to like a sensor or something. I'm done. I'm not playing my land first because I I really wanted them to counter this. Now I'll just pitch the swamp to the blood. They're trying to save the absorb for something like Soren, which, you know, I don't blame them. I think that's pretty greedy, Superfly. Pretty greedy, but I do think there's spots where you can do stuff like that, you know. All right, so let's attack. And we'll probably go Thoughtseize Fable. Let's see what they do. They'll absorb this probably. Unless they have another counter. Uh, we'll take the Narset. We'll just leave them with a couple more counters here. I'm going to play the Sorn because we don't have the Ripper and I want them to counter it. And then maybe we'll draw another way to protect the Fable. Alright, so now they have Absorb. And a Ganjo. Through Field Rune. That's fine. Hold on to this for a while. I'm going to go ahead and play the Fable into their Absorb uh, so that my next thing is uncounterable. What's up, Beasts? Bummer to hear, but glad you're in the chat. So they went ahead and killed my Hive. Yep, and then I'm going to go ahead and play this on Vampire. There we go. All right, well, they still have a Ganjo in hand, so assume that my Blood Tithe is getting hit with the Ganjo this turn. If I draw an untapped lane, we can play this Vein Ripper. Now we just hope they don't have uh, some big payoff. We took away their Narset and their Wandering Emperor. And so now we're just kind of sweating a Planeswalker off the top or something. We're going to go ahead and play this even if it hits No More Lies. At some point, something has to resolve. I mean, that's not true, but I'm hoping at some point something resolves. Archfiend looks weird until you cast against Phoenix. Arch Archfiend looks weird until you cast it one time. One time is enough, right? Blue Vampire. Cannot be countered. Do something about it now, Chief. No verdict, please. No. The moment they move to their turn and they just start tapping four, I know that it's gone. All right, we need a big draw here. Any big boy? I'll take this time to thought seize farewell keep your shitty counter spell as always all of our threes so the only thing that gets countered by no more lies at this point is arch fiends no they drew a freaking teferi dig through time maybe worse jeez louise we needed to get like one more threat down early the uh the everything getting countered. They had the the two, three, four, five counters or whatever. Brutal. Alright. Something? Something good? Bummer. I don't think that Azori's control is that good of a matchup. And it doesn't get that much better after board either. But it's not that bad. I think it's okay to concede. They're just like uh such a high life total. Do I want the Shieldred's Edict so I have an answer to all their Planeswalkers? I don't think so. I think we're fine as is. Would love to play first. Opener is kind of a bummer. 
This one's a bit better. Uh, we're going to keep put back bitter. I think I'm going to thought seize on two. Maybe I should mutable on one and attack on two. Maybe that's unhinged. I think people don't do that enough in general. But I think with a thought seize active, you're not supposed to. I'm going to play Blood Crypt Taps. Just thought seize on two. If I draw a two drop, I'll be sad. But the thought seize is going to be good at, no matter when we play it. They put a card on top. All right, we're going to start casting threes next turn, and we're not going to stop until they die. We'll take the absorb. They probably kept a two cost counter spell on top. We'll probably lead with Soren. That's my guess. We're going to lead with Soren because if it gets countered, that's not a big deal. And if it doesn't get countered, we'll minus into Preacher. Land's pretty good. Let's go plus one counter. Let's attack. We'll get a creature. Address. This is going to take verdict from them. Then we'll play Fable. Hallowed Moonlight. I think we're going to go ahead and play Fable into the Moonlight. But maybe we don't. It's because they're going to Shark for one. Verdict is fine here no matter what. Force them to play Moonlight. Next turn, we'll send both Mutavolts, probably. Put a counter on the Preacher again. We'll draw a card off the attack as well. Maybe I throw my Vampire at them instead. Uh, wow, we drew the answer for the... All right, we're going to attack first and kind of force them to Shark for two. Or to use the field rune. All right, so they played the pathway. So we know they have Sunfall and two randoms. All right, so they're not going to field. We'll go for a dress. Take Sunfall. Lyra Dawnbringer. Jeez Louise. Big. Not that good, though. We can put a counter on this and attack, and then play Archfiend if we draw a land. All right, so that means if we don't draw the land, we might be in some trouble here. Uh, it's wrong one. All right, so let's go plus one, plus one counter on the Preacher. So we get to attack and draw a card and gain life. Drew Duress. Not in love. I might not draw the land next turn, and I know that I have at least one hit with the No More Lies, so we're going to go ahead and play the Duress. Last card's Field of Ruin. Okay. So our Soren's going to die. If we draw a land, though, we can play Archfiend and then Reflection it. If they Wrath us, we can just play Archfiend post-combat. They're at 13. We have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, but Field of Ruin stops some of it. We don't have a swamp in the grave, so the second field of rune is not going to brown us. 
But they might try to cut me off a red. Okay, so they were immediately drawn to doing that. I think I'm just going to attack with everyone. Maybe I should target the Preacher. I think the extra card's probably worth, and I don't think they have a removal. Wow, that's a good draw, chat. Let's see if it resolves. They're kind of in wrath mode. Any counter spells on top? Yes! Wow, dude. That's so sick. All right, opener is very strong. Got the one, two, three curve on the draw. Even having the one on the draw is great. Dark slick. Probably means Fatal Push isn't that good, but maybe they are something else. I'll lead off here with Thoughtseize, I guess. Let's see what they're on. Give us an idea. Maybe end up discarding the Fatal Push to the Fable. All right, well, we're not going to play too much into removal. So we can take Cruise or we can take Picklock. So it's Blue Black Phoenix. It's either Prankster or Cruise, and I think it's just Cruise. Picklock finds another Cruise, but consider an Opt-Do as well. So I think that we're probably going to lose this game. Our Ley Lines are quite good against the Blue Black build because they have trouble having alternate threats. We do have to expect, like, Crumha Sea Shark, I think, instead of Young Pyromancer, which makes our Fatal Pushes a bit worse because we have to have Revolt. Oh, they found the land. Unfortunate. Nazis. Okay. So their hand is pick lock, fatal push, bitter, one rando. They're going to take fable. We'll play zealots. And then hopefully we just draw into some of our nutty nutters. There's one of our two nutty nutters. Let's see if we can find the other one. I feel like they're going to really struggle against Soren. Uh, Ben Ripa. So Ryan, how are you doing, buddy? Taryn, I hope you're doing well, my friend. Can't wait to see y'all. I'm going to be at uh, Apex Gaming in Caldwell, Ohio on April the 13th weekend for their Team Open shenanigans. Make sure to come on out. All right, we'll go ahead and thought seize them, and then in response, they're going to pick lock. And then we get to take whatever they take off pick lock and just let them have their removal. Uh, it is April 13th weekend, so like 12, 13, 14th, I think. Or maybe 13, 14, 15th, something like that. All right, well, let's leave them with the opt. And we'll attack. They might just push this because they can. We'd love to have you come out, Jay Walla. All right, let's just hope they don't find Treasure Cruise. Oh, they did draw Treasure Cruise. That's a bummer. All right, let's let them discard, because they might discard a spell to try to buff it. All right, they did discard push. We're going to go ahead and push this now. All right, we're going to plus on the Zealots, put a counter on it. That way it's a relevant threat.
Another Birdman. Alright, let's hope they discard a land here so we can use Soren to plus and kill the ledger. Discard a Phoenix. Which Apex was closer to Cincy. I mean, it's not very far, man. I can drive to Cincy in like an hour. I don't know how much closer you want it to be. You want it in your backyard? Ha 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 ha. Nice duress, you fool. Alright, so I know they have a bitter triumph. I think they have a bitter triumph. I don't know what the other card is. They played Slide of Hand Duress, so it's probably... Ah, crap. Alright, we'll put a counter on the Mutable and attack for three, I guess. I mean, I too... I mean, look, I got really lucky for a couple years where Star City was running uh, Invitationals uh, like two miles from my house, and I got to wake up for work. In a, in a spot that was pretty good. All right, let's go for... Just plan on pumping the Zealot. Do another land. I guess maybe I should have thrown the Zealot at the Arclight, hived the Phoenix. I don't think we can win this game. Our game one configuration... It's pretty hard to beat Phoenix in general. And then it gets a bit better after board. They are just blocking my my Death Toucher. Okay, buddy. I don't think they realize they got Death Touch. I did not expect them to block with Ledger Shredder. I'm pretty happy about it. Thorn down. It's a three hour drive to Apex. Damn, maybe I'm thinking of Columbus. Every time we drive, I just see so many signs for Cincy and I just assumed it was much closer. But I know that it's pretty close to Columbus. All right. Treasure, treasure Cruise number three, really making my life miserable. Thoughts is okay, draw, because now we can activate Hive and attack with Hive and Zealots. We can also push them away from their ability to uh, maybe combo off next turn, getting Phoenixes back. Triumph discard Grave is fine. Two lands. Okay. Anything worth taking over there? Hopefully we draw a Vein Ripper. They're kind of in a stalemate position. No, I agree. Yeah, there's a bunch of cheap hotels next to Apex as well. And so you can stay for the whole weekend for, you know, a couple hundred bucks, maybe less. And uh, get you some friends, split cost. It's going to be a good time. The uh, e So there's a team event on Saturday. It's uh, standard Pioneer Modern. And then Sunday, I believe it's just Modern. There are a bunch of other side events as well, though. All right, so let's go plus to deal three to the prankster. Maybe we kill the phoenix and just hope they can't get it back next turn. Should not have played this. I don't know why I did habit. Just hoping next turn that they don't have anything. I've already played three cruises, but they can find them pretty well. Put one on bottom. Hive can help them pressure the Sworn, but we can hopefully eat this Phoenix. 
I guess playing the land makes sense, because now if I draw land, I can animate both creature lands. Alright, let's send this. We did. Nice. Eat the Phoenix, put him down to seven, and then I'm going to put a counter on my Meta Vault, I think. They didn't have removal for the Hive, so they're not going to have removal for this Meta Vault either. And I value the Meta Vault body with a counter on it specifically higher than the Pick Lock, or else I would throw damage at the Pick Lock. What do we play round one? Azori's Control. Close three games. We won game one in a fun way, in game three. They had Lyra Dawnbringer, and we drew a Liliana in a cool spot. All right, they found Treasure Cruise 4, I believe. They can pick lock, cast Cruise, but they don't have any Phoenix in the yard here. They can animate Hive and hit the Sworn for 4, but then they're getting cracked back for lethal threats. So they're going to have to pinch block, jump block. Want to animate Muta plus on it and attack as well? Uh, I don't know. One, two, three, four. I thought I didn't have enough mana to do both, but I think I'm just stupid. Two, three, four. I think I'm just dumb. I don't know. My brain shut off for a second. I thought I was one short, and so I didn't activate, but I think you're right. It's a huge mistake. happens when you're talking and streaming at the same time it becomes like kind of difficult sometimes to think you're just on autopilot and when you think a thing and you say a thing that thing is just the truth even if it's not shoulder is a nightmare All right, we're going to send with both. They've gone through all four cruises. So the shield red is still scary because it can gain a lot of life off opt and consider. So my guess is they'll double block here, trade here. Maybe not. Maybe it's chump, double block here. So we're going to get both the pick locks probably. But then the Soren maybe sticks around. I can still play this Muta Vault as well. Interesting. So I guess they were afraid of Fatal Push. If I had Fatal Push, I would have thrown with Soren and then pushed the Shieldred, but people get afraid of things and play around them even though it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, something like that, Jessica. It was just a mistake. It was just a mistake. In my brain, it was uh, inactive. I don't know. Whatever. I blame my autopilot. The same guy that drives. Same guy in my brain that drives the car. I blame them. Here comes Hive. My Muta Ball's probably dead here. We're going to throw it in front of the Shieldred to keep the Sorn alive, I think, if they'll let me. Uh, unfortunately, special effects, I was not able to get a ticket. I still have a line if they open up uh, entry again, if they are able to expand the convention center area. Uh, I'm also trying to get on the coverage team, so you might still see me in Atlanta for the Lorcan events yet. Yeah, they're talking about the previous turn, Optimus Tom. I had a Muta Vault I could have fired up. Unless I drew it for turn. Did I draw the Muta Vault for turn? Did I draw Muta Vault, Muta Vault? No, I drew, I played a Black Leaf Cliffs the turn before. I, it was just a mistake. 
We're also burning an immense amount of their clock. So if we can get to three games, we might time them out. They play slow. If they don't, okay, I was going to say, if they don't send the shield red. All right, let's animate the meat vault to save the Soren. They're probably going to kill it. All right, now, I guess the question is now, do I even want to? So we can, one, two, three, four, animate, animate, animate. So we can just let this happen. And then we don't have the Soren, but we do have a Muta Vault. There's, I guess, some chance I can gain life as well. I'm going to save the Soren for one turn. Kaito Shizuki. I wonder if they're going to make a 1-1. Alright, gain some life. What do we got? I need a Vein Ripper. Vein Ripper stats. Uh, yeah, Just Guy. We actually came out with a couple things recently. All right, let's go Muta Vault. Put a counter on it. They may just soak it. And we have this Bitter Triumph for the Shieldred now. And we'll play that at some point after they declare no blocks or chump block. All right, they don't block. That means they're taking a huge chunk here. And I'm going to go ahead and just kill the children so they can't gain more life. I'm going to make them kill me too. I'm going to make them deal me 21. It probably won't take them that long. I'm, I guess they have a bunch of Phoenix in hand because they don't have any red sources in play. They've only seen one Phoenix so far in the graveyard. They have 17 total cards left between deck and hand. It contains three Phoenix. Here they can go Hive, Send, Free the Fae, Mills over another Phoenix, and it gets a Bitter Triumph. Okay, so my lands are dead, but that's okay. The Soren's dead as well, probably. They can attack with the Hive. Play the pick lock. They're looting to discard Phoenix before combat here. We might deck them. We might deck them. If they can't get back the Phoenixes this turn, we might deck them. Well, they might have like two, but they might have milled them, like milled over Blood Crypts or something. I know some... Okay, so there's one Stormcarve Coast, and there's maybe like a Pathway or something. I don't know for sure. That's kind of the way it goes, though. The way they built the blue-black version. Oh hell yeah, special. I'm I'm a big fan of Lorcana so far. It's been really fun. Oh, they announced the other locations? That's cool, Taylor. I think I retweeted it, but I didn't actually check out the locations. I've been doing that a lot where I know the things I need to like uh respond with. Or not respond, but like. Alright, so they're going for a bitter triumph, discarding Thoughtseize. I don't think they're getting back Phoenix right now, and they only have one card in hand. They're attacking face, and they're going to play this pick lock probably. Eight cards left in deck chat. We might actually deck them. I've never decked Phoenix before. They always kill me before I can deck them. I have not gotten to draft the game. At all. All 
All right, we'll get to eat this phoenix as well. They're going to go to two chump here. But I have played a decent amount of set three constructed. I've been really enjoying it. Okay, so they did have the fatal push, but they let me eat anyway. So I guess this is so they can double block to take no damage. That's fine. We get to kill one of the pick locks. It just makes it harder for them to physically kill me. One of the things I've noticed with the uh, blue-black version of Phoenix is that they have a lot more... So, like, the blue-red one plays Lightning Axe Fire Impulse as their red cards, and then, like, a couple of ones along the top of the curve. And the other builds are, like... Um... Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Um... But the blue-black one plays a lot more black spells, and so your pathways are on black more, you want to play Swamp, and what it ends up happening is, like, you're too reliant on your opponent having creatures in play to get back Phoenix, whereas the red one just churns more. It's just, like, a better draw card deck. I don't know why. I don't know exactly what they do differently. All right, so we can animate Hive Attack. I think I'll just not, though. That way, if they ever put Phoenix in the graveyard, we can attack. Thoughts on locations? Uh, interesting, but not interesting enough. And powerful, but maybe not powerful enough. The blue-black one... Or sorry, the uh, Amethyst one is really good. But mostly because it works well in Amethyst Ruby. I bet uh, Ruby Sapphire with McDuck Manor is probably good as well. You imagine they're supposed to be making ninjas now? Yeah, they probably should have made ninjas last turn. Maybe I should have forced a trade with the hive because now we can't. Play Archfiend. Probably should have caverned it just in case. I'll force them to block. And then we'll get to eat the Prankster, heal them two with the Archfiend ability if they don't have another Bitter. If they have a Fatal Push for the Hive, that's fine. We have the Archfiend chilling. I might have actually killed my... I guess I didn't kill myself with the Archfiend because they just won't have enough Flying Blockers. But I guess there just is a chance that I lose because of that. Playing the Prankster. We'll eat the Shieldred in case they have Takanuma. But with so few cards left in deck, I'm not sure that matters too much. So this one can't be blocked, but it's only a one. And the Prankster has three toughness, so we'll kill that. That way, later we can maybe kill the token some other way. So now they may push the Archfiend, if they did have push. Yeah, okay, so we're not going to die to that at least. They're at three, and they need two blockers. So they'll probably hive me for three and then leave back two ninjas, or they'll attack me with a ninja and have back... Ninja plus Hive, but then they're dead to Fatal Push. I may lead back everything so they don't lose to Fatal Push. All right, so we know they have two Phoenix between the five cards in hand and deck. Creature of the Schism. Uh, I will trade Hive for Hive in the hopes that their ninjas don't kill me in time. <laughs> mm. All right, they have tons of mana, so we'll definitely kill the Hive. I doubt they have another push. They may have gone through them all. We could probably figure out their last five cards if we really tried. But I don't want to do that.
I don't know if this is a May. They might just minus this again. Yeah, this isn't a May on the draw, so they'll probably just make a 2-2. Two -two. Whoa, they drew a card? So they're re reducing their own clock by a full turn? Maybe they just felt like the Preacher is too strong. All right. Uh, so we definitely want the Ley Lines... I don't think Dust Legion Zealot is that great. I don't think Archfiend the Dross is that great either because their removal just kills it. So we can maybe get rid of these six. Get in these six. I don't like Edict. I don't like Lily. I don't like Damping. I don't like Kalidus. All potential considerations. Moving, I guess the Fatal Pushes can probably come out. Maybe like two push, even two Zealot. But Archfiend is for blue-red Phoenix, and blue-black Phoenix's removal just kills it, so. Play Sphere. Yeah, I don't like Sphere in matchups like this. It's not really what the game's about. It's not about chaining stuff together and combo killing. It's about longevity. It makes Sphere slows down the nut draws of bringing back Phoenix on turn three or whatever, but that's just not a game I'm really afraid of. That's something that a lot of people don't understand about how sideboards work. How magic works. It's like the card damage here looks like it should be good against someone playing a bunch of considers and stuff, but it's just not. Unless they're trying to grape shy you. I still don't even know if I should cut all these pushes. I think just two push is fine. I don't normally like dress against blue red phoenix. I like to board in a weird way because the arch fiends are good. Alright, well, I'm gonna keep this one. Maybe the bitter triumphs are bad, actually. Maybe that's the trick. We flip flop. We'll keep put in ley line, and then their life should be pretty miserable. They also have to win two games with only eight minutes o'clock, which is extremely difficult for their deck to do against me. I'll go ahead and thought seize on one since we drew it. Probably gonna blood crypt on two, but maybe we cavern. Blot out, not a big deal. Cruise. Let's see. Cruise. These things are just like not very good against the ley line. What do I take? Maybe I just take blot out because it's their only answer to a big boy. Maybe Lily's fine. I mean, wow. Go Vampire. And we have an answer for any two drop, and then we have Soren Vein Ripper on three. Leyline Soren Vein Ripper on three, huh? Not bad. With Thought Seize removal on the, along the way. They kept the top card as probably a land. They do have the red source for the Phoenix. And so we do have. Uh, so we're going to play the Vein Ripper. Oh, what if they play a creature here? See what they make. All right. The Bitter Triumph is making my thing look worse. So I think I have to kill this ninja, actually. All right, now they have to go land Phoenix, go, and then they have to bitter triumph after. We're going to pressure this so that they can't make a token with it. They're going to loot. Let's see what they discard. Card of the cruise makes sense. Ledger Shredder, if they have land plus the kill spell, we're in trouble. All right, so they do get to slide with the loot. So we're actually in some trouble here because they do have the ability to sack the Ledger Shredder. They pitch the Phoenix, interesting. 
I think I still go after the Kaito first, but oh, I got itchy nose, sorry. Maybe they have another Phoenix. I'm going to throw this at Kaito and then go six at face. Jesus Christ, was not expecting a big spike raid today. Thank you, Spikelings. Welcome. So we're... Oh my god. And the tier one. 35 months out of his mind. Thank you so much, Spike. Appreciate you, homie. Hope you had a good stream. I was watching your mono black uh, Scion Draco thing. Did you end up, uh, did you end up, uh, going 5 0? Hope you had a good one. Welcome, Spike, Spikelings. I think that's what we're called. All right. Well, we're going to attack and they're going to go for the Bitter Triumph and we're going to probably lose our thing. But they are running out of time. All right, we'll let this happen, and then we'll see. I mean, if they just go so low. I'm going to play another Ley Line in case they, uh, they discarded. No, they paid life. We'll shock, and I'm going to go ahead and play another Ley Line in case they go for a bounce effect. Thanks for all the follows, y'all. Appreciate you. Uh, Distinguished says, uh, GC Paradise, I used to live in Fairfax and had them as LGS. Really cool to see them sponsoring someone. Yeah, we, uh, we've been sponsored by them for a little while now. And, uh, I really like the people who work there. Been in contact with them a decent amount. A lot of follows. I appreciate y'all. I'm Tandy. If we're entering into Pioneer RCQ season, uh, I play mostly Pioneer. So hit the follow button if you hadn't already. You'll get the little Ron Swanson laugh and, uh... Thank you for me. Appreciate you. Distinguished Narwhal, Benoff, Jerry, Miguel, and Glandular. Thank you. All right, let's duress. Let's see what they got going on over there. Bitter Picklock Shieldred. Uh-oh. I think we're in trouble, chat. I think we're going to lose to the Shieldred. Unless we get a little lucky here. Maybe I should hold on to the second ley line. Let's see. Taking the blot out. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder if I play this game differently, what it looks like. If I take something upside blot out early, the blot out makes my vein ripper stuff much worse, though. But I had to play so weird against Kaito. They didn't have Kaito in the opener. I probably would have taken that because Leyline bricks so much of their draw. All right, well, game's going to end quickly. I'm going to go ahead and play this on Vampire. Let's take a... If we had two lanes in hand, I would have played that earlier so that we could Vein Ripper if we hit our sixth. Unfortunately, that's just our fifth, so we still couldn't cast it anyway. The Meta Ball dying earlier to the Soren, maybe that was a mistake. All right, see you later, Novembers. We're fine. I don't think we're fine this game, but this is game two of three, and we're up a game, and they have less than four minutes on their clock. Oh, we drew the tapped land as our sixth land. Unfortunate. All right, so we're going to take six. The Vein Ripper is not going to save us, I don't think, but maybe. We take four, five, six, draw to seven, eight, and then they can just pass turn and we die. All right. Well, I don't think they'll be able to win game three in the four minutes, but they are playing significantly faster now than they were before. This is why Leyline is good against Phoenix, but they all have an alternate win condition. 
Now if they just send everything, we die. But maybe we get to put some triggers on the stack. Or they're just going to pass turn. No attacks, and then I die to draw step. All right, I changed my mind. I want the zealots. Actually, I want, maybe I want everything. I want ley line for sure. The vein ripper stuff's okay, good. The fatal pushes just look so bad. Even when they kill the right things, they look bad. Because they just kind of rot on my hand for so long. I wonder how much I'm supposed to value Archfiend. Just trample. Does Vampire struggle against Amalia? I believe they do, yes. We think about Mindek and Shoulder instead of Archfiend. Uh, I mean, that's kind of what Seth Manfield did, right? I really liked Archfiend. I don't think it's that good against the blue-black version of Phoenix because they have black removal, but it's great against the blue-red version of Phoenix because the removal is damage-based and Lightning Axe only does five. Shoulder dying to the axe is why we're playing Archfiend. I don't want this Kalidus. I'm going to go back for my Dust Legion. I just want some more attraction early. I want my Sorns to be a bit better. I can throw my 1-1s at their 1-3s. 10's pretty good. We're going to keep. I mean, I don't know what you're saying. I'm literally just playing the game. I activated my lands. That's the only thing I did. They have played slowly, and they are probably going to time out because of that. I'm not going to, like, click a bunch of shit that's going to try to time them out. I'm not going to, like, chat trade them or whatever until they die. I'm going to play my cards. Main phase, free the Fey. I don't understand that. Ah, because they're just trying to play quickly. That's why. So they got go blank. So let's get Fable down. We could go Sorn Plus, but I think that's worse than just playing Fable. Fable gives me some more mana as well. And with the Go Blank, I'll probably just discard a Sorn and a Ley Line. We're probably just going to beat them before they run out of time anyway. They did not play the Go Blank, which means they have Fatal Push probably. I'm going to play Harvester. I'm going to kill this Prankster, I think. And we're going to attack and then Duress. Yeah, if they want to take their time playing Go Blank, it's fine with me. All right, couple card draw spells. No Phoenix in the graveyard, though, so. I have a minute 45 to 
do anything. All right, I'm going to play Soren over the other Fable. That way there's just like another thing for them to have to beat. Okay, they just concede. Okay, two of. We had this exact same hand two games ago. I'm going to keep it again because we just have turn two Blood Tithe and we have half of our combo and we have a Blood Token and plenty of things to do in the meanwhile. Our blood token gives us a lot of extra looks and mulliganing hurts when we play blood and fable. And we just need so many raw resources to hard cast vein ripper if we don't find it. Okay, so it looks like we're playing as Boros stuff. Could be burn, but it's probably Boros heroic or whatever. Going for Blood Tithe Harvester here. If they have a kill spell for the Blood Tithe, I think that's okay. We'll go like tap Blood Crypt into Bitter Triumph next turn, probably. But maybe we discard Blood Crypt to Blood. Another Swiss Spirit. Do they not have another land? Didn't. F well, I guess I didn't feel like they had another land, but I guess they do. I think here is a similar block to just like running into the God's Willing or whatever. It does like Defiant Strike trade, which I don't know. Maybe I'm not supposed to. I think I'm going to main phase kill the Swiss Spear, but maybe I shouldn't. I'm going to discard Sulphur Springs. We have two looks at a sword next turn with blood. Bye, Gigantha. Bye, Gigantha. No. <laughs> this one always kills me, chat. I was hoping they didn't have another creature. All right, we're probably going to die. But I don't know if that was ever not the case, because if they have God's willing, they could have protected this anyway. Well, they made pretty, like, plenty of, like, sixes and seven vampires, Ralph. Vain Ripper is the first one that has, like, self-protection, works in a couple different types of builds. But uh, I agree. The Sorn package is quite strong. But I also don't think the Sorn package is good without Dust Legion Zealot or Blood Tithe Harvester. All right, well, GG probably. They don't need that much more to get it up to eight. This is 12 right now. They still have five cards in hand. All right, so this forces a block. And if they have another thing, then uh, we're dead. All right, they found the lands. That's true, Ryan. That's true. All right. I hate this card. I hate it. I hate it, chat. All right, we're going to get rid of a lot of our expensive stuff, and we're going to play a lot of low to the ground removal. Something like this. We want all of our discard. Dust Legion Zealot doesn't really trade that well, and we're cutting our Soren, so it's probably something like this instead. Leave the Arch Fiends of the draw so we can physically win the game. But I think the Vein Ripper part of the deck, maybe we cut this as well and we trim a Cavern. I think that's fine. But this is kind of what the old Jun decks used to do against Infect, where they would cut Tarmogoyf 
and just rely on Dark Confidant and uh, Creature Lands. Little of the Veil. We're kind of doing the same thing. The Dust Legions can chump block, but maybe they don't chump block. And so that's why. Because everything tramples or has protection. Kind of wanted... Maybe I should have chose to draw also. I know that sounds weird, but... All right, I kind of want to keep this hand because we have a lot of really good cards. Uh, I'm going to mulligan because we're on the play. If I was on the draw, I would have kept... I'm going to mulligan to five. All right, this hand's pretty good. I think I put back Harvester Kalidus. Keep the Fable Path Push. I guess I want to play Harvester on two pretty badly. Kalidus back is fine. I think it's Harvester. Maybe that's weird, but... I don't really want to push because I have the Path of Peril. Gabriel Piano, thanks for the follow. I'm hoping they just like tap out for a two drop, get hit with Path of Peril, and then Fatal Push takes their third creature from them. If they go for like a Defiant Strike, I'll probably kill it in response, but take the one otherwise. All right, I'm just going to play Fable here. Fable will get caught up in the Path of Peril, but if they're not going to play another creature, the Path of Peril loses a lot of its luster. Lauren's Escape also protects from Path of Peril, so it's not always going to get the job done. No land. All right, let's attack. I'm going to play another Fable, I think. Just get aggressive. They're, like, constricted on mana. We basically just don't want to trade Fatal Push for God's Willing, and we want to try to do everything we can to stop that from happening. I think... We're not going to, we're just going to let this happen, you know? The moment they hit their third land, all bets are off, and we have to probably play a bit differently. We also are kind of looking for a discard spell as well to see what's going on over there. I will play Preacher and have um, Beta Push to like do the Death Touch plus Thread Block. And then once the Fable's flipped over, that plus Blood Tithe Harvester lets us kind of kill most things. I'm going to go ahead and play the Harvester as well. We're just being very aggressive. When they suck, make it better. All right, Cam. Um... Do you remember all the Warhammer guys? And do you remember how Paul made a second store just to keep all the Warhammer guys away from all the rest of everyone else? <laughs> you know? Just, uh, we're going to make a store 10, you know, 10 feet away just to keep all the Warhammer guys away from you. Uh, we'll just take it, I guess. Oh, that's nice of you. All right, well, we're just going to take this, I guess.
Still only seven. So there's three, six, nine, ten, eleven. So. All right, so is this lethal? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're one short, but this is lethal if we do this. If it's not lethal, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Easy. Didn't even have to play the fatal push chat. We didn't draw any discard effects there, but uh, we we're able to just leverage our early creatures. They were stuck on lands for so long. You know, they were just holding up God's willing the whole time, and we just forced them to make all their mana rot. And that's kind of what our plan was once we saw them miss their third land. You know, we had Fade of Push forever, literally never cast it. Waited for them to tap out. They never did, so we just beat them on board. Cut pushes, obviously. Yeah, dog shit card. Get him out. One of my favorite things, Cam, was going to uh, Empire After School and playing the fighting game. Although I don't remember the name of the fighting game. I played a lot of Metal Slug. Metal Slug was my jam. And that's where I met y'all. That's where I read a bunch of comics that I really still like to this day, including Invincible, whose ad adaptation they just made is excellent. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend. They are in the middle of season two right now, and it's been really fun. That's right. Yeah, they'll just always play around as special if they can. My goal is to make it so they can't. I wonder if I should have like three Vein Ripper, three Soren, and no Dust Legion, no Archfiend or something. I'm not sure. I think all the dresses are good. We can also just discard them later if their hand's empty, but their hand's like never empty. Yeah, I think so. I think it's pretty good to do this beast. It's like a unique type of matchup where the top end is just like not viable because they can just trample kill you or whatever and they don't have removal right they don't have removal anyway they have reckless rage i guess <laughs> yeah me too cam i did mulligan to five that game too if i'm not mistaken this sounds pretty good see if they play creature on one Probably play Blight Step on one on black so I don't take damage from my stuff. I might want to take a creature, but I also might want to take something from them that can pump this favorite hoplite while I'm tapped out. Okay, so they're going to go for 10th District next turn, probably. We can just take Anger. No, let's see. What, what are they going to do next turn? If we take Showdown, I don't want to take Showdown. I don't want to take Showdown at all. So I guess. They're going to play 10th District next turn no matter what, and we have to kill that probably. So why don't we just take... Man, this is tough. Maybe we should have thought seized so we could take the creature here for this reason. Monstrous Rage kills me all the time. I'm going to take that. I don't know if it's correct. Because they do get a freebie cast of anger here if they want it. But it makes blocking a nightmare. Wild. Pretty happy about this, honestly. I probably should have took that. But I kind of wanted them to do this. This kind of walks into a Path of Peril if I can find one. 
We're going to take five, though. It's a pretty big hit. It was going to be a big hit no matter what I did, though, because we're on the draw, and they had a one drop, and they drew another one drop. I think I have to get lucky and steal a thing from them, so um, we're going to just wait for them to tap out here. They did not play the 10th District Legionnaire pre-combat. I might be dead here. Monster Strange there. I don't think I can even afford this Thought Seize anymore. I'm just going to tap out for the rest of the game anyway. I have to take a damage anyway, so let's go ahead and play Fable. And we'll obviously offer the Fable trade with 10th District Legionnaire. I said obviously, but maybe it's not obvious. I'm not sure if I play Kalidus or Archfiend. Oof, okay. But this isn't playing a land, and we're only taking three. So I guess now we play Archfiend. All right, we're definitely going to discard Dust Legion. I think that's it. All right, we can block with Archfiend in most situations, so I think I'm going to play Archfiend. And the Cletus can't block the favorite Hoplite against a lot of cards. And if they just play 10th District and say go... We'll be happy. And then we'll attack and play Kalidus. Have the Fable transformed. Have the ability to copy Archfiend and go for Lethal the turn after. Virtuoso, but we know their last two cards. All right, let's hope they can't give Illuminator Trample and kill me through the lifelink of Kalidus. All right, we have to attack because we're just threatening lethal next turn. And we know their hand. This happens a lot where I just am dead to top deck or dead to, like, a combo cards. If they just draw a creature or land, we're fine because showdown doesn't do anything. Anything that buffs Illuminator just leads to a bunch of combo potential. We basically just have to block with only Cletus. Opponent says GG's. I say GG's back. Yes, we have the combo, but we can't cavern on Vampire and play Soren, unfortunately. So we just need a Black Source off the top. All right, this is a pretty similar hand. We'll keep, we'll put back one of the two Fatal Push since we'd have no info on them. We'll keep uh, Perfect Curve as long as we draw lands. Only if they're the Fortnite Copter? Yeah. What's, the, what's, what's that? Um, it's not a Battle Bus, is it? Is it the Battle Bus? Elf or Thoughtsies? Damn. All right, so they're probably going to take Soren. Leave me with a Vein Ripper stranded. Nice cam. I know we talked about this the other day, but I was a big fan of Upheaval plus Zombie Infestation. They took Vein Ripper over Soren. I'm not sold on that being the best decision, but I guess it just depends on their deck. Turn to Harvester here. We may pop the Blood Token next turn, discarding something, just depending on what deck they're playing and if I draw the land or not. This looks like a Molly combo. Innkeeper. Annoying as always. I'm going to pitch the Soren. I'm going to keep pressuring. Yeah, time keeps on slipping. That's what they say. Into the future. Oh, I'm just, I'm redeeming the Ric Flair. Sorry, I forgot. Woo! Hold on. I have a better one.
Lunark Veteran. Let's go to the memory bank. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Worth the 5k points. Yeah, he had his resurgence uh, in the 90s. He had like a late 90s resurgence. He was a bad guy. He was the bad guy. He played a good heal. Lance? I keep getting tap Lance chat and it keeps making me really sad. I think this matchup's horrific. Yeah, I'm 37. Gonna be 38 soon. Awkward. It's always been a great heal. Well, everyone always talks about Ric Flair, right? And to me, Ric Flair was a good guy in the 80s, early 90s. Mr. All-America or whatever. He had some spots where he was a bad guy, but then in the late 90s, he became a really good heel. And then in his like 80s or whatever, he was his daughter's manager and he's like, you know, still relevant or whatever. But All right, well, we're in a lot of trouble. Maybe I should just not fatal push anything, but you have to try to keep them off of... Uh Quarter calling, but the extraction specialist in the deck has been ruining my life. So making things very difficult. Zebra Gum, thanks for follow. More system of a down. All right. All right, so now they can cord. They can do cord for Amalia stuff. So what's in their hand? They have two cards. Is it two Wildgrowth Walkers? Would they play them? Would they even bother? We're going to play the Archfiend and we're going to attack with the Harvester. Offer a trade. They might just take it and they do. All right, here we go. What's your favorite system of down Zebra Gum? If you sub, I'll put it on for you. All right, maybe they have nothing. If they If they straight up have nothing... You know, maybe we have a shot. This thing's got trample, homie. If they have court here, I think we lose because they can just get Skyclave Apparition and stop the Archfiend. Interesting. I mean, I guess their hand is just two lands. I have no idea how I'm winning the game. They are they just drew nothing. They thought this trample... Or I guess they didn't know that this trample... Does this not trample? I could have swore this had flying and trample. What am I thinking of? Bonham Mayhem, maybe, yeah. Uh... All right, so they're going to go to nine. So this is whenever an opposing creature dies. So we can activate Hive, attack with everybody. I think we're still just dead to cord, basically, but live against most everything else. Good kill innkeeper. I think attacking is just better because it's all sorcery speed anyway. So cord for Skyclave eats this. They do some trading. They're not dead. Maybe that besage you, besage you on the hive. Their hand has to just be nothing, or we're dead. Even if it's besage you, I might be dead. I 
I mean, it's already a Death Machine Demon. I just thought it was Super Death Machine Demon. What is this? Cord for hardcast? For three? They should probably convoke with this. All right, so they can get, if they have Skyclave, they can get Skyclave. Eat this. Block here, take six. Down to three. And then we get a 4-4. Four, four. Alternatively, they could have something that can gain some life here. I guess that's the first time anyone's ever blocked my Archfiend. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess most in my brain, most demons have it. Oh, I guess they gained some life too. Rip. So they're hitting the Blood Tithe Harvester. All right, I'll see if they do some blocking. This is lethal because of the ability. I think they just don't know how my cards work. I don't know, man. All right, so we'll bring in any and all removal, Kalidas, Lily. I kind of want Leyline too, man. That's weird because they don't have very much for the graveyard, but they do have some. I don't know. Don't ask me. I just work here. Do I want the duresses? They have a reasonable amount of stuff that if I duress it, it's like pretty bad for them. But I do think Sword and Vein Ripper is good. Archfiend's good. Archfiend is maybe a trap, though. I don't think I would have won the game there if my opponent knew what my cards did. And I don't think I would have won the game if they... I could have actively lost the game because of Archfiend in a spot where I was pretty heavily advantaged due to the weakness of their draw. I don't think Dust Legion does enough. So maybe it's these seven for these seven. I think that's fine. I like all my threes and I like the Vayne Ripper combo. Below that. And Dress can just miss too often, so we're just going to bench it. Leyline turning off your death triggers isn't great. Uh, I mean, we don't... It doesn't turn off any of our stuff. It only hurts their stuff. Oh, right, it turns off... Yeah, you're right. Good call. I guess if we're cutting Archfiend, but maybe it doesn't matter. I wonder if Dust Legion is worth keeping... When we're on the play. Probably not. I just like having it for Soren throwing it at creatures or whatever. Maybe we should sideboard some smugglers copters for Azorius control, but it gets caught up in Leyline binding too much. <sighs> All right, hand's pretty great. We're going to keep a lot of interaction. I'm not going to fade a push early unless I know that they don't have extraction specialists or something similar. I don't want to thought these here. We're going to hold up push. If they play something on two... That makes me want to push, I will. And then I'll Thought Seize them next turn. Like, hitting this with a Fatal Push is pretty rancid, but they have plenty of two drops that pushing is fine. And if they play an Innkeeper, then we can maybe push the Veteran in response to the Innkeeper. Maybe not. Selfless Savior. Well, that's something we can push. And I do want to push that over the Lunark for sure. All right, so their hand is three cards. Let's go ahead and Thought Seize them and see what they are. Leave them with the Wild Growth, take the Amalia so they don't get anything.
All right, another Lunar Veteran's fine. They're going to have a lot of life. A, a lot of life. I wonder if they play the Besaju. All right, we will go ahead and kill Wild Growth Walker here just so we can use our man efficiently. And we're going to play the Preacher so that we can start attacking and getting 1-1s. One well, that changes some stuff. I think it makes the... Preacher play... I don't know. This is fine. I mean, obviously, it's one of the more powerful parts of our deck, but they're just going to send a Soren and kill it, and then we block in a little bit, start attacking, play Preacher. We're just in the same spot, but we got a Vein Ripper in play. If they don't attack, I'll be very excited. I'm going to put a... Counter on the Muta Vault. Maybe I should put it on the Vein Ripper because it deals more damage and gains life, but I don't think my life total matters that much here. And I actually want my life total... I guess I want it high, so I draw cards with Preacher. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably a punt. That's probably a punt. I was just... I don't know. Definitely should have just put it on the Vein Ripper. Because now I don't get a, a free card. I just get a creature. I probably should have thrown this at one of the Lunarchs, but I don't want them to have a flying blocker necessarily. All right, there are five. Now, if they draw the bring both of these back, if they have return to the ranks for these two, then we're in bad shape. Coco for these two, we're in bad shape. Is getting it over 20 ever matter to tank in a Molly hit? No, because they don't, they go get the uh, Etherflux Reservoir. Well, I don't know if they drew it or not. Maybe they drew Coco and they're trying to figure out the best place to do it. They're at five. I'm going to go for Soren plus to kill. And hope that they're just dead. Okay, we'll just let that take the one so they can't bring something back. Okay, weird. We'll All keep right. this hand. I have a feeling we're going to draw the land off the Dust Legion Zealot. I have a feeling. Opponent is Obosh. That's scary. It's very scary. Preacher the Schism gonna make some one ones this this fight, I think. I guess it just means that they're mono red aggro, mono red obosh, or green red obosh. I'm actually, I think, better off against green red. Because I can take an elf from them, or I can, you know, take one of their big top end threats if they're all mana. But if they're just like mono red, and I am starting the game dealing myself a lot of damage. It's a little awkward. All right, we're going to go to 17 and see what's up. They are mono red. What are we taking here? We can take Swiss Spear. Swiss Spear shuts down a lot of their stuff. Kamano is pretty good, too. Maybe we take Kamano. They play Swiss Spear attack. We play Harvester. Maybe that puts them in a bad spot. Maybe that's better. Oh, nice special. Did you see the uh, Red Wedding build that I made? I had a good time playing that one. So they can play Swiss Beer, hit me for one. I'm down to 16. 
I play Cavern, I go to 15, I play Blood Tithe Harvester. I'm like kind of soft to a lot of one mana removal. Did you have Bama going all the way in March Madness? I don't really participate in March Madness. Sorry. All right, natural land draw is pretty good because now I can curve naturally into Preacher and start making 1-1 one, one lifelink blockers. What's up, Guntron? Lose balls of the devil? I know, I know. Let's say if they just play Spikefield Pass, we win. But if they go like any anything else, we're definitely going to block. There's like so few things that punish me here. Monster Rage even is not that bad because it still trades, right? Oh, Monster Rage. It doesn't trade, chats! Oh my god, it doesn't trade. Monster Rage is so good. And they're going to play Spike Field, and then I'm basically dead. That's so gross. Nice. Yeah, Secret Lair, Secret Lair Ragavan's a sicko one. Wish you could play Vamps? Why can't you play Vamps? Alright, so let's play this Preacher, and then, depending on what they do, this should be quite good in this spot, no matter what. If they have a land, they can go land, Chandra, take up, light up the stage, and then we'll just start pressuring that, maybe. I'm hoping they don't have a land. If they have a land into Chandra, light up the stage, I don't think I'll be able to win. Because I think I have to trade with Swiss Spear, and then all my 1-1s one are bad. I guess it ticks up to 4, and then Meat of Vault plus Preacher does kill it. But then we're still having to wrestle with light of the stage stuff. Lava runner, lava runner. Perfect. Now we can take. I don't know what we take from them with the Thoughtseize. I guess we take both. I do kind of want this 1-1. One, one. Maybe we can't. Maybe we can't attack yet. Hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of life to spend. Go Vampire. This blocker is not very good. Because everything tramples or is small. Fable's okay draw. I guess we block. Take four. Probably dead to another Monstrous Rage. I think we'll go to one with another Monstrous Rage. I haven't counted, though. I don't think blocking with the Dust Legion makes so much sense. We're just dead to so many things. I think chumping with this is maybe right. But I want to be able to attack with this, get a 1-1, one, one, and then have a lifelink double block with two 1-1s. One, but so maybe that's a pipe dream. Maybe I should just block. Monstrous Rage, man. This card's been murdering me. Brutal. So brutal. I think they targeted the one thing that doesn't kill me. I think we go to one. If they target one of these, we just die, I think. All right. Well, we're not dead. Surprisingly.
So Spear, still not dead. We'll go to two. We'll block here. Or we'll go to one. Get a free block here. Chump here. I'm going to go ahead and discard this Thought Seize in case we draw some lands that we need to get rid of. All right, we're on the Rager's Edge. That's where I survive. That's where I thrive. All right, well, still not dead. I think I discard nothing. And we can play both of these and attack, right? I think we do that. Maybe we hold up the Mutal Vault. All right, so we go black, red, harvester. We're dead to a lot of stuff. I'm hoping we draw, I guess, Vein Ripper. That way we can maybe close the game quickly. Archfiend's also fine. We have to trade both of these if they send. Dead to every burn spell, dead to every haste creature. Yeah, Soren would have been nice with the lifelink as well. I agree. All right, so we want Path of Peril for sure. Kalidus for sure. I don't think we want Lily. I like Shoulder Zeta because of the Chandra. And any removal is good removal. I think I'm just going to cut Thoughtseize. And Dust Legion. And maybe we actually have three Duress. And no Dust Legion, no Thoughtseize, something like this. I think this is okay. The life damage, uh, the damage you take on Thoughtseize is brutal. And Zealot's a bad blocker. So many 6 6 flyers. Actually, one's a 6 5 flyer. Yeah, they have a lot of hits. So I think just getting our Thoughtseize and Dust Legion for dress and some more removal is fine. The Bitter Triumphs we can discard, but it kills Planeswalkers as well. But maybe uh, maybe Bitter Triumphs not as good as I think. The discard's not that bad, though. No, if it was a 6-6, six, six, it would mm, dodge Lightning Axe. We should have died in that game much earlier. I'm curious if instead of Kamana, if I just take Monster or Swiss Spear, if I win very easily or if I lose because they just drew another. I guess they didn't draw another creature for it. That Matras Rage was rough. Maybe I'm just not supposed to block with Harvester because it's got to be Matras Rage and that just lets them use their mana efficiently. Yeah, maybe. And then we have another thing to pressure the Chandra so I don't need to... Play so aggressively. All right, sounds great. We're going to keep. May have ordered a Phoenix 75 last night. I mean, Phoenix is good. Phoenix is good. It's hard to be mad about playing Phoenix, you know. Soulscar made, sure. Hive's okay draw. It's a land, but it's a land that has a cool ability. And doesn't deal as damage. All right, this is bad news for us. I think I play another Blood Tide Harvester. But maybe... Maybe we save the Blood Tide Harvester because we can throw it at something with Soren.
maybe it's Blood Tithe because it trades more easily. And they're just afraid of Fatal Push. And then we can just pitch something. Because I can play Mutavolt and then sack Mutavolt with Soren. But I'm going to play Archfiend next turn, probably. If they have another shock, yeah, we're just dead. <sighs> Guess we discard Fable. I don't think I can discard Mutavolt, just like need it for both things. Wish I had drawn the Fatal Push earlier. Blood Tithe Harvester just like never surviving to interact with these sucks. Path of Peril also fine. This is 9, 11, puts me to 5. Can Soren Mutavolt go to 8? They have one card left with a couple little guys. One card in hand. I wonder if I can afford to play Archfiend here. Should I play Mutavolt or does it matter? It probably matters. Probably should have. I wanted to bluff uh, Fatal Push, though, so they didn't go for Monstrous Rage. But I guess I play... I'm just dead to so much stuff anyway. So let's hope that we get to untap with the Archfiend and survive. We're dead to so much stuff, though. All right, one card in hand. Are we dead? Damn it. Wizards, Lightning. Well, we're dead to everything. Great. All right, well, we didn't get the trophy, but we did go 4-1. Mono Red's not a deck that we have uh, a lot of heat against on the sideboard. But, I mean, if we drew Path of Peril there, I think we would have been pretty good off. Uh, our opponent's draw both games was quite strong, and we just were just one turn behind basically most of the time. Archfiend of the Draws, I think, really helps in matchups like that. The Soren Vein Ripper combo also helps in matchups like that. And the fact that we just like didn't get either of them online in time uh, says a lot about the necessity of that combo in, in the format, I think. Um, main deck felt pretty good. I think Bitter Triumph might need to become Heartless Act. I think Archfiend of the Draws might need to become Shieldred. Uh, some combination of those things is probably true. Basically, what I'm seeing is basically no is it Phoenix on in Pioneer Leagues. But in real life, I think that you're going to play against a lot more is it Phoenix. And Archfiend of the Dross is going to be excellent there. But Bitter Triumph uh, has felt, you know, I don't know if it's better or worse than other options. But dealing three to myself hurts sometimes. The Sword can push back against the life loss a decent uh, amount. We didn't see it in, in that match, though. Um, maybe a fourth sweeper effect would be good. Uh, Ley line kind of falling out. You know, it's good, but, like, how good is it? And also, do we really need that many? Because Phoenix is just non-existent in the leagues. But we need to plan for the future of the Pioneer format. And the big four are Phoenix, Rakdos Vampires, Blue Eye Control, Lotus Field. And number five, you can make an argument for. And uh, that's kind of where we're at, man. I don't know. The banning of Monogreen Devotion changed everything. The printing of Vein Ripper changed Rakdos immensely. We are in a significantly different universe than we were last year, this time. And I look forward to playing a bunch of decks in the format, including Rakdos Vampires, which I'm having a lot of fun with. Uh, make sure to hit the follow button on your way out. I'm Tandy. I'm here playing Magic. Twitch.tv slash Tandy. You can check me out on YouTube, YouTube at TandyMTG. Check out my sponsors, Apex Gaming, Moxfield, and Games of Comics Paradise. Big shout out to them. You can check out my written content, including full cyborg guide for Rectos Vampires on Patreon now. Patreon.com slash Tandy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.